Without further ado, I'd now like to call upon Charles Thompson, founder of the Stuckist Movement, to conclude the case of the proposition. <laughs> trying to stop conceptual art, it's just a question of what we classify it as. People are welcome to go away and kick a uh, takeaway container down Bedford High Street if they want to, as long as the police don't mind. But the problem is when they actually think they're doing something of any great significance. <laughs> <laughs> there have been some absolutely extraordinary associations made against the proposition. The first one, I mean, it's a good job there were several speakers in between Dr. Stephen Ducar and me, because I was absolutely bloody boiling mad to associate. Yeah, I, I, he's done it. Adrian Searle said the Stuckists were ranting. Before this debate started, I was perfectly calm. And now I'm not. And I have to admit, Adrian Searle is right. Uh, and I, you know, really feel like it ranting. To associate the Tate Gallery with anything radical is absolutely absurd. It's the bastion of establishment. Well, the whole art establishment, a multi-million if not billion pound business, backs conceptual art, that approach to art. And apparently it's meant to be challenging. Actually, the reason why it's so successful is it's not at all challenging. The reason it's successful is because it's a commodity, it's very easy to sell, and the people that buy it are people that don't want anything challenging, they simply want a status symbol. That doesn't invalidate conceptual art. In fact, even if the Tate was the bastion of radical and progressive art, it's neither here nor there. We're not talking about whether conceptual art is radical, we're talking about whether it's valid. The other thing that's been said by Miroslav Balak is that conceptual, well, he said the spine of art is conceptual. Huh? Oh, Sorry, uh, <laughs> I've been rehearsing this for the last week. Get your name right. I get it wrong every time. Sorry. Um, the spine of art is conceptual. That's absolutely true. The spine of art is conceptual. But what would we look like, look like walking round just a spine? <laughs> There's some kind of claim being made that somehow conceptual art has a monopoly on concept. Well, of course it doesn't. All art is informed by concept. But it actually takes it one step further into making something worthwhile with the concept. The thing about conceptual art, how do you recognise conceptual art? Well, the plain fact of the matter is you can't. Because it's the same as everything else. That's the problem with it. It isn't anything different. The reason why we have the word art, as opposed to any other word, is because it categorises a different activity, which is distinguishable from other things. If it wasn't distinguishable from other things, there'd be no need to have a different word. You could just use the same word that you used to the other things in the first place. So there has to be something different between art and the rest of life. And if you go and look at conceptual art, you won't notice any difference. The Tate Gallery has bought 39 metronomes for £34,000. You can get them on eBay for a total of £800. I'd check this morning. <laughs> Those 39 metronomes are no different to any other 39 metronomes. It's the same with any conceptual art. You can look at it and it's no different. The bed that Tracy Evans got is no different essentially from any other dirty bed. The Tate Gallery also bought a flea circus, that's probably about 80 grand. It's no different from any other bloody flea circus anywhere in the world. What is the difference? Matthew Collins has put his finger on it, you know, the guy is a genius, I thought he was a bit of a dope, but actually he turns out to be a genius. 
It's art. Why? Because someone says it's art. And that is the crux of this question, of this debate. If you think simply by saying something is art, it makes it art, then please vote against the proposition. If you think that's what it takes, because that is the only distinguishing factor at the bottom line. If on the other hand you think actually there should be a bit more to art than merely saying this is art, then support the proposition. And you may think I'm exaggerating. I'm not. I was on uh, Newsnight on BBC Two ten years ago with Bradley Corr, and he said, yes, anything can be art. And I said, is my shoe art? And he said, yes. If you say it is, I have to accept it and consider it on those terms. So if you want to be an artist, it's very easy. Uh, your nose is art. <laughs> Pleasure. Um, your shoe is art. In fact, all of your shoes are art. Everybody could kindly look down at your art. You're wearing it. It's fantastic. It's that easy. And it's symbolic and it's meaningful and it has concepts. Think about the place of shoes in the world. Where would we be without them? <laughs> Blisters. Think about the history of shoes. We're not talking about whether painting is art or sculpture is art. We're talking about whether conceptual art should be called art. Whether painting is or isn't is completely irrelevant. Whether anything else in the world is or isn't art is completely irrelevant. It has to be ruled out of court. What we're looking at is whether conceptual art is art. That's the only question to consider, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> watching too much telly. <laughs> <laughs> but don't just take my word for this rubbish. Take the word of the man who has become possibly the world's ever richest living artist from doing it. Surely he should know what he's doing. Dr. Stephen Dutard, Dukard did give you a bit of a quote from Damien Hirst, but I found a much better quote in the Observer magazine of 6th of September 2009. And this is Damien Hirst. I had a big dance with conceptual art. But there are things in art that are a dead end. Conceptual art, abstraction, they're total dead ends. You start thinking, there's enough bloody objects in the world, why are you making more of this shit? <laughs> so, the bottom line is, is anything art? Because actually, the only thing that differentiates conceptual art from what we have in the rest of life is the fact that it's done by an artist. And the only reason you know that person is an artist is because they've done art. So that's it, you know. I do art, therefore I'm an artist. How do I know I'm an artist? Because I do art. And it's circular. My point is that the art has to justify itself. Something has to justify itself as different from any other activity. You have to look at it and you have to know that it has its own inherent quality. It's not just something else given a different name and the thoughts attached to it, because you can attach those thoughts to anything. If the idea is to provoke thought, then simply tell someone to go and look at the nearest object. Close your eyes, look around, open them, and you'll see something that you can fasten on, which will generate thought, Go somewhere else, middle of a supermarket, do it. Go into the countryside and do it. Go into your house and do it. You'll find all these objects. Of course, objects have resonance. They have associations. You can use them as a catalyst for thought. You don't need an artist to do it. What you need an artist to do is to provide something that they've made. They put their thought, which is self-evidently art. That is the key to art. It proves itself. It doesn't need a load of theoretical hogwash to confuse everybody about it. Thank you.